for the moments where I'm still in your presence. All the noise dies down. Lord, speak to me now. You have all my attention. I will linger and listen. I can't miss a thing. Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new. So I, I surrender all. Cause all I want is to live within your love. Be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you. into the wind I am desperate for a touch of heaven oh, 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 oh. You're, you're the fire in the morning you're the cool So hold the life in my bones. There is no hesitation in your love and affection. It's the sweetest of
even a moment, a second in God's presence can change everything. Amen. Have you ever experienced that before? Being in God's presence is the best place to be. Being in His presence is saying, God, 
there could be stuff going on in the left, there could be stuff going on in the right, but I'm with you right now. You're all I need, and I'm going to rest in your presence, knowing you are taking care, knowing you are at work on my behalf. Amen. And I want to I want to pray this weekend in terms of asking God to send revival to this nation, but that we would experience his presence most, most importantly. You know, I love that song, Touch of Heaven, that we were singing. You know, we don't need to wait until we're in heaven to experience the blessings of God. We can bring heaven to earth. I love when Jesus said, he said, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's pray that way here today. Amen. So Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, lifting up his name, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. First, Father, I thank you that you would bring revival, Father, revival to this nation, revival to this state, revival to central New Jersey, Lord God. We thank you for the revival, Father. We speak it out, Father. We speak it out, Lord. And we thank you for your presence here in this place. I thank you, Father, for your presence, that we could rest in your presence, Father. And Father, we pray, Father, for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Father, I thank you for those that are experiencing sickness, that they would experience healing, Father. They would see the healing power of God manifest in their bodies, Father. For those that feel like they're experiencing lack in finances, Father, I pray that you would supply all of their need according to your riches and your glory. For those that fear weary and beaten down, Father, I pray right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we're in your presence, it would be replaced with peace and with joy, Lord God. Peace and joy that can only come from you, not from circumstances, but from your presence and from your love, Lord. So I thank you, Father. Thank you for just, we can come and worship you in this place, Father. We can rest in your presence. And we can thank you ahead of time, Lord knowing that you go before us, that you are in our tomorrow, Father, that you are in our next week, you're in our next year, you go before us, and then you walk with us hand in hand, Lord. So I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Would you say amen and give God some praise today, amen? Amen, amen. Well, you could be seated, and we're going to take a look at some church news. February Thrive Class Authority of the Believer is open for registration. We created Thrive Classes to help you become a committed disciple of Jesus and grow deeper in God's Word. As believers, it's so important for us to know and understand who we are in Jesus and the authority that we have in Him. This will help us to have an abundant and victorious life that God has called us to. To sign up for this Thrive Class, simply head over to the Hub or sign up at newbeginningsnj.org forward slash thrive. Every weekend at our in-person and online gatherings, our worship and production teams are on stage and behind the scenes, working hard to provide an environment and atmosphere of worship for you, our church family. It takes a dedicated team to make this happen every week, and we need more people who want to use their gifts to serve God with us. If you can sing or play an instrument, if you love working with computer programs, cameras, and audio equipment, we need your skills on our team. If that's you, the time to step up is now. Learn more and apply to join our worship and production teams at newbeginningsnj.org forward slash worship. If you're in 6th to 12th grade or you're the parent of a 6th to 12th grader, make sure you're at our Battle of the Sexes house party going down this Wednesday, February 3rd at the Brick Campus. We're getting competitive with fun games and contests as we prepare to kick off our new February series all about relationships. Come hang out with us, eat some free food, and have a great time. We can't wait to see you there. God is good, amen? Amen. Welcome to church this weekend. If I've never had an opportunity to meet you before, my name is Matt. I'm our Bayville campus pastor here at New Beginnings. It's so nice to see you all this weekend. And let's give it up for everybody with us on Church Online this weekend for joining us. We are excited. We're excited for this weekend. This has been a great series, Life in 2021. We're in it. We're in 2021. Amen. And we're learning how we can get equipped to have the best year that we can. So we can see God moving in our lives and we can be a blessing to others as well. Amen. And if this is your first time with us here in person, just go ahead and grab that red connect card you'll see in the seat back in front of you. And if you're online, just click that connect with us tab right there. And we would love 
to get an opportunity to know you because we truly believe it's not just a place to attend here at New Beginnings, but it's a family to belong to. Amen? And we would love to have an opportunity if you're here and it's your first time at the end of the service, just take that red connect card to our first time guest area. You'll see it in the lobby by the red wall. We would love to meet you there after service. We have a free gift for you this weekend as well. And if you've been coming here really any amount of time, maybe a few weeks now, maybe a couple months, and maybe you've even been here a few years, and you've never went through our Next Move class, I really want to encourage you to go ahead and do that. And it takes place on the first and second weekend of each month. So you can get plugged in to the February class, which will be starting next Saturday and next Sunday. And through Next Move, you can become a member here at New Beginnings Church. And, and also you're going to learn about the church, the history of the church, the future of the church. And then also you have a chance to get plugged in here. Because listen, God has given us all gifts and abilities to serve one another. Amen? He's given us, and the church, it's not a building, it's a group of people. And we come together each weekend to serve one another, to serve those who come through the doors who may never have heard about the gospel before. And we need you, so you can get hooked up and plugged in in Next Move. So go ahead and sign up for that. You can do it right at the hub after service. You can um, always go online as well to newbeginningsnj.org, and you can sign up there and really get plugged in. Remember, February classes start next weekend. And we're going to use this time now, continuing in an act of worship with our giving. Amen. And we have a couple ways that we give. You can grab an offering envelope and give that way. Or you can give online. And you can even give via text now. Super easy and convenient way to give. And, you know, I was thinking about giving. And in 2021, really, the theme of the whole year is being completely dependent upon God. And one of the areas for a lot of us to be completely dependent on Him is the hardest is our finances. Because sometimes finances, I'm sure many of us know here, they could fluctuate, right? One week you could be like, oh, this is very easy to give God. Yes, I will give God to God cheerfully. And the next week or the next month, maybe it's, uh, I don't know if I can give to God cheerfully this month. But here's the thing about God. God is constant. He stays the same. And his word is always faithful. And he tells us in Philippians, Paul tells us, he says in Philippians 4.19, because he's telling them, going to verse 17, he said they were giving, they were faithfully following God's principles. And he says, he says I'm not even so happy for me, but I'm so happy because of what it's going to do for you. And he says, and he knows my God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So this year, be completely dependent upon God in your finances. And give cheerfully every single weekend, because no matter the circumstance, He is faithful to supply all of our need according to His riches and His glory in Christ Jesus. We are just stewards of what He has given us. Amen? Amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pray for our offering here this weekend. So, Father... We thank you so much as we come before you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to give and that we could be good stewards, Lord, of what you've given us because everything that we have, Father, we acknowledge that it comes from you. So, Father, I thank you that you would bless our giving in here. Father, you'd bless our giving in each and every household giving here and online. Father, I pray just increase to them and you just bless them, Lord. And, Father, we are thankful again, Father, that we could be faithful stewards of what you've given us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, you could go ahead and receive the offering. And we are in the third week of our series, Life in 2021. It has been a powerful series so far. Make sure your heart is open to God's word here today. Amen. So why don't we welcome our lead pastor, Joe Source. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Matt. Thank you so much. You know, as, uh, as Pastor Matt was, was sharing what he was sharing just now about the offering, uh, just, just, just something just dropped in my heart because you're talking about this is genuinely the year that the Spirit of God is calling us into a deeper place of dependence upon Him, and there's a reason for that. It's not that God doesn't want to make us into emotional cripples that we can't live life without Him. It's so that we experience more of Him. Two people got it. It's so that we experience more of Him. Okay, now listen to me, okay? Now, now, now listen, let me just qualify this first. And for those of you that are joining online, please just don't, don't check out on me, okay? The whole thing about being a Christian is, is experiencing his presence. It's not about following rules. It's not about how much of, you know, you can pray better than me or I pray better than you or I know more scriptures than you do. It's about knowing him. It's about experiencing his presence. It's about allowing him to affect every area of our lives. Yes or no? Yeah. Otherwise, we're just playing games. But listen to me. Look, this ministry is extremely blessed. 
when any of us come up here to talk about finances, it's not, it's not an arm-twisting thing. We're good. The ministry is blessed. Amen? God promised us many, many decades ago that anything we were going to need to accomplish what he called us to do, he would supply. Now, he supplies that through his people. But what I'm going to share with you, just this brief moment, because I've got a lot to teach this weekend. Okay, and I want to be able to finish this message is this. If you're not allowing God into your finances, if your finances, in other words, if every other area of your life you've submitted to God, but your, your finances, you're not experiencing all that he is. Because finances are a major part of your life and my life. It's a major part. That's one of the things that, that keeps people up at night without sleeping. It, keeps, it gets people nervous. It gets people anxious. When you, if, if you're not submitting your finances to him, you're not experiencing the fullness of God. Amen. You're just not. Why? Because he's an all-inclusive God. That he doesn't minister to us in one part of our lives and then says, okay, this area here, you're on your own. Could you imagine if he did that with our health, with our physical well-being? Like, you know, I have your heart. I know your spirit is, is alive unto me now because you're born again. You're, spe- you're filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? But you're, as far as your physical health, you're on your own. What kind of God would that be? Okay? So my encouragement to you, and let me tell you something. If there's any place that my wife and I have seen the faithfulness of God, have been through disasters financially and amazing blessings, it's in that area of finances, And let me tell you something. The greatest thing that you can do for your own life is to say, Father, this is all yours. Everything I have, everything I've ever hoped to have, anything I ever had, it is all from you. It all comes from you. It all belongs to you. And now you start seeing your dependence on God. Not your dependence on, well, uh, you know, can we afford this? Can we not afford this? Scraping, uh, just being constantly sick to your stomach because you're in a financial bind. Put your finances in the hand of God and watch what he starts to do for you. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, I do want to say this ahead of time. Those of you that are joining us online, please get your Bible out. Those of you that are here, uh, get your Bible app out. If you didn't bring your Bible, and I pray that you would start bringing your Bibles, okay? Bring your Bibles. Turn to somebody say, bring your Bible. Go, go online, put it in the chat there, bring your Bible. Okay, but if you're joining us online, get your Bible. Get your Bible app on your phone because we're going to get into a lot, of, a lot of the Word tonight. Okay? All right. The other thing, too, before I get into this, please remember, uh, tell all your family and friends that live up in Monmouth County that next Sunday is going to be our first uh, service that's open to the public. Amen? Amen. And uh, our campus is located at 1615 Glendola Road. It's right near the intersection of Belmore Boulevard. And the service is at 10 a.m. There's full children's church. It's totally open. Uh, registration is a must, so be sure you, you tell your family, your friends that are up in that area, or if you're going up there, to make sure that you go online starting Tuesday, which I believe is February the 2nd. Uh, registration will be open online. Okay, last week we talked about the power of forgiveness. And one of the things that's worth, worth mentioning uh, that we probably didn't emphasize so much last week is how asking for forgiveness transforms us when we do it the right way. Uh, if you were not, if you didn't get a hold of that message yet, please make sure you go online. Uh, go to our YouTube channel there and go uh, listen, watch that message from last week. True forgiveness brings change on a, on, on a heart level, and, and the level of our heart, and the level of, and you can't separate your heart from your spirit. Okay, it's, it's like when we say heart, it's our inner being. It's the core of who we are. And that's where we want to experience transformation. Forgiveness, uh, for true forgiveness is based on repentance. And if repentance is true, then it brings forgiveness and brokenness. And it brings us into a place of humility. Uh, it breaks pride in us. When, when you and I have to humble ourselves and ask forgiveness from someone, it dis- disconnects us from the fake images that we put on. Of course, nobody in here or joining us online would probably ever do that. And it brings us into a place of God-honoring humility. Amen? Amen? So, true forgiveness is based on repentance. True repentance brings brokenness and humility. Okay? And that's what we're talking about 
this weekend, I want to present to you the truth about the power of brokenness. And many of us, in fact, most of us, usually want to run away from any kind of situation that would cause us to be exposed to hurt, to embarrassment, or disappointment. Yet all of us suffer from these things from time to time. And let's be honest. Brokenness is something that we try to avoid. We try to avoid it at all costs sometimes, but the cost of avoiding it is way higher than the cost of maybe having to be transparent or vulnerable or exposing ourselves to possible criticism or embarrassment. An old-time pastor had this to say, God uses broken things. It takes broken soil to produce a crop. Broken clouds to give rain. Broken grain to give bread. Broken bread to give strength. It is the broken alabaster box that gives forth the perfume. It is Peter, the betrayer, weeping bitterly, who returns to greater power than ever before. Amen. Amen. Now, although Jesus promises us abundant life, sometimes the door to that abundant life is through brokenness. It's never pride. It's never self-preservation. I don't know if, you, if you've gotten to this point in your walk with the Lord, but I found this out very early on. You and I receive nothing from God unless we become vulnerable. I'm going to say it again. Unless you're willing to become vulnerable, unless you're willing to, to, to get, out, get, get right out there on the edge and be vulnerable and be transparent and be open, you are very rarely going to receive anything or, or you're very rarely going to sense the presence of God. Because there's a principle in the word that we don't talk enough about. The fact that he resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. Amen. There are times that we're given a choice between living the easy life and a life of service or self-sacrifice and humili humiliation. We need to consider this when we're given that opportunity. When you're faced with an opportunity to possibly suffer emotionally, but come up on the other side of that thing a different person. Consider this. Broken people learn to be dependent on God way more than on self. Once you've gone through a process of brokenness, just think about busting up all the tough places, busting up all the hard places. Uh, you know, when you have a solid shell, nothing can penetrate. Sometimes we need to go through some things. And I'm not saying that God always leads us or causes us to put ourselves in a position like that, that, that even sometimes the enemy attacking you may lead to a, a period of brokenness. It's not that God is saying, okay, devil, go ahead, sick him. It's that God knows the end from the beginning. He knows the process that you're going to be walking through. And he knows what he can use that process for. Amen? Amen. So broken people learn to depend on God way more than on self. Broken people, listen to this now, broken people are much more willing to help other broken people. Amen. Do you notice when you go something really traumatic in life, when you go through something in life, it all of a sudden it opens your heart to others. Even sometimes you may have been in a situation. I found myself once in a situation. Um, I had never been in a hospital in my life, never been in any kind of procedure in my life. And then a number of years ago, I found myself in that situation. And I was only in the hospital for like two nights. And I came out of that like, oh my God, that's what this feels like. You know, being up all night making deals with God. Like, Lord, if you get me through this, if I come, you, you know what I'm talking about. But, and, and what it did to me, we had, we had a member of this church, a young man who had battled cancer for years, years, probably six years, and ended up going home to be with the Lord. And that man was in the hospital I, don't, I couldn't even count how many times. And after I had my, my situation, you know, you come through that now, you, you, you get broken, but out of that brokenness, there's a humility, there's a, uh, there's a sensitivity, there's a compassion that develops. And I remember as soon as I saw his widow, I went up to her and I said, man, I had no idea what your husband was going through all this time. I had no idea how traumatic it is 
uh, to be in the hospital facing a life and death situation. And I said to her, if I ever showed any insensitivity, I am so sorry. What happens? That brokenness will transform you. Are you getting this? So broken people learn to depend on God way more than on self. Broken people are much more willing to help other broken people. And broken people become trophies of God's grace. Now, in the Old Testament, we've got a story of the life of a family who endured much tragedy. But through their brokenness, God was glorified. I want us to go to the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. I'm going to read a lot of scripture, so I want you to follow me. If you're joining us online, please, I hope you got your Bible. I hope if you've got the split screen and you can see your own scriptures there. Verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, so this is the time period right after Joshua has passed off the scene, that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to dwell in the country of Moab. In other words, he's outside now of Israel. He's not in God's promised land. He has taken his wife and his two sons, and he's gone to a territory outside of the 12 tribes, okay? Okay. Uh, verse, verse 2, the name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Mehlon and Chilion, Ephratites of Bethlehem. They, they came from, from that area, Bethlehem and Judah. And they went to the country of Mo, Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives of the women of Moab. They married women outside. that They were not in covenant with God. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they did dwell there about 10 years. Then both Melon and Chelion also died. So the woman survived her two sons and her husband. So now we've got a widow. At least she had her sons. Now the sons are married. Now they're all widowed. We've got three widows in this situation. They've left, they've lost their loved ones. They've lost their protectors. What, this is such a sad story because they are forced to leave their homeland due to a famine. No water, no crops, no food. They arrive in the land of Moab, which is on the eastern side of the Dead Sea, stretching today would be in modern day Jordan, where the inhabitants did not worship or serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they served pagan gods. Then Naomi's husband dies, leaving her in a foreign land with two sons that are now married with foreign women, and then the two sons die. Now the three women are left without support, without protection, without hope. Now Naomi hears that the famine that forced them to leave their land is over with, and that the land of Judah once again is prosperous, uh, so she's going to return to Bethlehem. She releases her daughters-in-law to return to their parents so that they can remarry and they can enjoy a good life. Verse 10. Then they, the two daughter-in-law, said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they are grown? Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for, you, for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Now we're going to find out that that's her opinion, okay? Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Catch that. The one daughter-in-law is like, see ya. Goes back with her family, but Ruth clung to her and she Naomi said look your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods return after your sister-in-law but Ruth said entreat me not or we would say today don't beg me to leave you or to turn back from following after you for wherever you go I will go wherever you lodge I will lodge your people shall be my people and your God my God where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you from me. This is, look, look, listen to me, this is covenant language. This is classic covenant language. 
She is bonding herself to Naomi. She is making a vow. Nothing is going to split me from you. Nothing is going to cause me to separate from you. I'm in this for the long term. And that, my friends, is a very valuable commodity that we see very little of anymore. If there's one thing that, let me tell you, there's one thing that I've learned about the Lord is that he honors those who are loyal. He honors those that are respectful. He honors those who show honor to others. And Ruth declares that she will stay and care for her husband's mother, even though she's no longer obligated to do so. And listen, listen, in her brokenness, she doesn't take the easy way out. She remains committed to Naomi. Verse 19. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the woman said, is this Naomi? She's been gone for, for at least probably 15, 20 years. But she said, now, now listen here. I want you to see this. Let's not just read this and let it just float over our heads. The, the condition of Naomi's heart is going to be revealed in what she says. Okay? Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full and the Lord has brought me back home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me? Man, this statement is very revealing. She said, don't call me Naomi. Naomi in Hebrew means sweet. But call me Mara, which means bitter. This, my friends, is the danger of the victim mentality. The victim, when a person sees themselves as a victim, they twist the truth in order to cover up a mistake, to cover up a sin, to cover up a lie. It's everybody else. Everybody's against me. In her case, she's saying even God is against me, which is the furthest thing from the truth. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full and the Lord brought me back empty. No, that's a complete lie because they left Bethlehem because they were empty. They left Bethlehem because it was in the middle of the famine. Be careful about how you, how you romanticize your past because let me tell you what we do and most, most of us would not want to admit to it. We go through a situation. It's a horrible situation. We get on the other side, and then we face, when we face another adversity, we start to romanticize. Well, you know, maybe it wasn't that bad. I had a situation, most of you, many of you probably know that we used to be in the restaurant business many years ago because all the crazy people are in the restaurant business. And that's where I left all my hair, in the restaurant business. <laughs> Tough. Hardly made any money eventually lost everything, lost the restaurant, lost our homes, lost everything. So here I am one day, now I'm going to sell off all the equipment that I have left because I swore at that point I would never go back into the restaurant business. So I'm in, I'm in a storage unit that we had. I forget where it was, someplace around here. And someone's meeting me to buy all the equipment that we took out of the restaurant and put in the storage unit. I'm walking around and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, it's just me. It's just me and God, because the Holy Ghost is always with us. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I used to enjoy cooking. I used to enjoy doing so. I used to enjoy doing all this special stuff. I used to enjoy coming up with my own recipes. And it was like God was in the room saying, and what about the times you went home crying at night? And what about the times when you get there at 6 o'clock in the morning and throw yourself on the floor in the dining room and say, God, get me out of this place, please? What about all the time? What about all you missed with your kids while you were working 14 hours a day? You see, what I was doing, I was romanticizing because I was feeling bad. But thank God that the Holy Ghost jerked the slack out of that. Okay, so what's Naomi doing? She's doing, she's romanticizing. She forgot that the whole reason they had to leave Bethlehem and go to a land where pagan gods are worshipped is because they didn't have anything to eat. They had nothing. There's a famine. There's no rain. If there's no rain, there's no crops. If there's no crops, there's no food. Be careful how you romanticize. Be careful how you talk about the good old days. She forgot whose fault it was that they ended up in Moab. Amen? And the truth is, God could have sustained them had they trusted them. Why? Everybody didn't leave Bethlehem. 
there were still people that stayed. There were still people that trusted God. Amen? Amen. So, she's grown bitter. That's why she wants to be called Mara. She doesn't want to be called Naomi. And it's because she had the wrong ideas about God. And let me tell you something, okay, church, listen to me closely. The way we see God determines the way we receive or don't receive from God. I'll say it again. The way we see God is going to determine whether you're going to receive from him or not receive from him. Obviously, until this point, she's not receiving anything. Why? Because she's got the wrong opinion and the wrong, she's made the wrong assessment about God. She thinks it's God that's against her. It's not that they made a mistake and left a place that they should have stayed. The wrong perspective creates wrong beliefs. And in the word of God, there are certain must believes. Say that with me, must believes. There are certain things you and I must believe. I'll say it again. There are certain things that you and I must believe. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I'll read it again. Okay, because this is important. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You catching this? So if we diligently seek him, we can expect what? A reward. All right. So we need to be careful not to allow the trials of life to cause our heart to become embittered against God, even as we see that happen to Naomi. You start entertaining wrong beliefs about him. He's faithful to walk us through every trial and tribulation in life and to bring us into the next season of blessing if we keep the right attitude about him. Even that blessing... And you're going to see that the blessing that Naomi needed and the blessing that Ruth needs is going to come on the other side of brokenness. Are are you getting this? Don't don't be afraid of brokenness. Do not, because you don't really know what you're capable of until you're put into a position to possibly have everything ripped out from underneath you or to possibly be just trashed emotionally now i'm not saying that god is this sadistic monster in heaven that sits there and go come on let's see what we can devise to let them go through this time no it's just that we're living on a cursed earth we're living in a world that is just saturated with sin and under the curse and so by living here we're going to encounter some things now he knows that he understands that and so you and i have to understand And you and I must grasp the reality, not to be afraid to go through things in life, because God is there with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. But what ends up happening sometimes in our life is that we we don't want to experience discomfort. We don't want to experience exposure. We don't want to experience putting ourselves in a position to be hurt. And sometimes life is just that way. Am I the only one that's found out? Who has found out that sometimes you're going to get hurt in life? So, so what should we do? If we're going to go through them anyway, then it's better for us to just submit ourselves to God. Now, I'm not saying put up with stuff that the devil brings us. I'm not saying that sit, just lay there and roll over and play dead and let the devil roll over you. Because there's some people do this. Well, you know, this is God's will for my life. No, 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 no. Okay. But there are sometimes we're going to go through some things emotionally. There's sometimes we're going to have an opportunity to suffer loss, whether it's through a mistake that we made, whether it's through sin that we got involved in. But if we'll allow God to bring us through, look at it this way. You're going to go through it. You're either going to come out Mara or you're going to come out Naomi. Are you listening? You're either going to come out bitter or you're going to come out better. So if you and I would just put ourselves, look, God, you know what's ahead of me. You know what's in my life. You know what's in my future. Whatever's good, I'm putting myself in your hands, trusting that no matter what happens, you're going to bring me through on the other side and I'm going to come up a different person. I will be transformed by that brokenness. Amen? Amen. 
So let's look what happens here, okay? Now, because what's going to happen is going to be transforming for both Ruth and Naomi. Now, um, they don't have any food. Naomi returns. Ruth returns with her. They come back from the country of Moab, and they come to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest, which, if I'm not mistaken, is in the spring, okay? So they're coming at a time of harvest. Why? Because they submitted themselves to some brokenness. They're trusting God. They don't have a guarantee of what's going what's to happen in Bethlehem. They have no guarantee. It's been a couple of decades since they've been there. It's a miracle that anyone recognized her. But they're taking a step of faith. Now, listen. They got to Bethlehem. No food. And they get there during harvest time. Look at the mercy of God. According to the law of Moses, during harvest time, the harvesters are commanded to leave some of the crops or some of the grain at the edge of the field for the poor and the destitute. And although it was meant by God to show mercy to those that were needy and poor and just had no food, ungodly landowners at time would use it as an opportunity to humiliate the poor. So knowing that there's no food to eat, Ruth offers to go and pick the leftovers of the field of a man named Boaz. He's a relative of Naomi's husband. When Boaz, who's a kind man, noticed her, he took pity on her. Then it was explained to him by his workers that she asked permission under the law of Moses. So her mother-in-law obviously told her about this to pick through the leftovers that she worked and that she was faithful and hardworking and she worked from early morning until late at night. Verse eight, then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen to me, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean, in other words, pick the leftovers in another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, Go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. In other words, you're under my protection now. I've already given my servants, I've already given my employees direction and instruction. Verse 10, so she fell on her face, bowed to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? Verse 11, and Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. Wow. And how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Now, now, now she's still in an embarrassing situation she still has to go pick out of the leftovers. But when you read this on your own, and I hope that you will, you'll see that at one point Boaz tells his servants, leave a little extra. Don't, when you go through the field, don't go through it like, you know, don't don't be greedy and take every little thing. Leave a little extra so that she she can be blessed. What does it teach us? It teaches us when we have the right attitude to trust God even in the hardest of times, it always gets noticed. First of all, by the Lord himself, and then secondly, by people. You know people are watching us. Do you know people are watching us? Even within our, 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 our family here, even within the church family, we have some that have been walking with the Lord for decades and decades. We have others that are newcomers to the faith. The newcomers are watching they're seeing how we're walking through life, how we're handling things. And you and I have such a responsibility to make sure that we set the right example. Brokenness can either produce bitterness or blessing. The choice is ours. Now watch this now. Naomi tells Ruth, oh, here's what I want you to do. Now when Naomi finds out whose field Ruth has been gleaning from, has been harvesting, she knows who Boaz is. Ruth doesn't yet. 
So she says to Ruth, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go wash up, perfume yourself, get your nicest clothes. And, he, and she said, now, now his men are going to be working at night in the fields. Because, you know, harvest time, you jump in and you got to do what you got to do. And she said, when Boaz lies down to sleep, then you go and take yourself and put yourself at his feet. Now, this is not a sexual thing here. Okay? Because let me tell you something. For a woman to have to uncover a man's feet and lay at his feet is a humbling experience. I'm not suggesting it. But this is the tradition and the custom of the land. Because Naomi knew when Boaz sees what Ruth does, he knows what it means. It's, in other words, please take me under your wing. Please let me come under your umbrella of protection. Now, again, according to the law of Moses, in order to preserve the family name, the closest living relative to Naomi's husband would be given the opportunity to marry Ruth to purchase the property that belonged to their family. And so, again, for the sake of time, I'm just giving you the highlights here. Please read the book of Ruth for yourself because it's an amazing love story. Amazing. So Boaz goes and searches out who is the nearest relative to Elimelech. You remember Naomi's husband? And he finds out who it is, and he goes to this man. And you know, now her reputation is all over Bethlehem. Everybody knows, not only is she loyal, but she's good looking too. She's a hard working woman. She knows how to honor. So, so the guy's like, yeah. But then he figures out in his head, wait a second. If I buy their property, I may endanger my inheritance. And so he backs off and then Boaz says, if you're backing off, I'm gonna marry her. And this man buys the property that, was, that belonged to Naomi's husband. And with the property comes Ruth. That's humbling in itself. Because in our mindset, we would think with Ruth comes the property. Here's another opportunity for her to humble herself. Because she's being, for all practical purposes, auctioned off. Now here she is after having suffered so much disappointment, so much humiliation. Now she's got to deal with and contend with in her own head. Who am I going to end up with? Because I don't have a say in this matter. Whoever is the closest relative has the right to purchase me. Another opportunity for brokenness. So this man Boaz, this kind generous man, wanting to shield her from shame and further humiliation, offers to speak to another relative, goes through the whole process, purchases the property. And here she is now. Ruth, the husbandless, the broken, the one who left her father and mother to follow a hopeless widow stood by her side submitted herself to a life of service in a land not her own Ruth's reward for her humility for her brokenness that she becomes the wife of the richest most honored man in Bethlehem she conceives and gives birth to a son and presents Naomi with a little grandson and they gave him the name Obed Obed is the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David who becomes the king of Israel and therefore the ancestor of the Messiah, Jesus, the son of God. She's in his lineage. Brokenness. And the truth of the matter is it's our very brokenness that brings us wholeness. You don't know what broken, you don't know what really wholeness is. You don't know what shalom really is until you've gone through some brokenness. Because without brokenness, you don't recognize the wholeness. I hope you got that. 
So, we may know how we come to, to a place of brokenness because many times we set ourselves up for it. We may be very much aware of our mistakes that brought us there, but we have no idea how God is going to use that brokenness and the power it has to transform us. This year, church, please, let us be submitted to God, fully dependent on Him, uh, to bring us through every adversity, every trial, through every hurt, every disappointment. Let's be determined to let the Holy Spirit use the very things that try to destroy us to sharpen us, to shape us, to mold us into the person that God desires us to be. Please, please, don't waste your adversity. Don't waste your lessons. Don't waste any of that stuff. Let me wrap this up with telling a personal story here, a personal side of my wife and I's experience. When we lost everything years ago in the restaurant business, we still have four kids to raise, four sons who like to eat. After many, many years of barely making it, dependent on those who God would speak to to bless us and help us. Provide us with food, provide kids' shoes, clothes. Through so many times of feeling humiliated, having to take groceries from the church, we submitted to it. We kept serving God. We kept helping others that had it worse than ourselves. We kept believing and confessing the faithfulness of God. And God used those times of brokenness, listen to me. God used our personal experience of humiliation, of constantly being under the gun of like, are we going to have food this week for our kids? Believing God for every day's worth of work to come in so we could pay our bills. After having been stripped of everything, but God used that to develop in my wife and I and in our family a heart of compassion for people that are in need. And we went from taking groceries from a church to giving out tens of thousands of shopping carts full of groceries because God used that brokenness. God used that brokenness to open up a door of opportunity for us to say, Whatever we, gonna, whatever we can possibly do to make sure that someone else never has to be in that position, we'll do. But it comes with brokenness. And the brokenness opens up opportunities and opens up doors of opportunity and opens up doors of resources. When you go next door and you see the food pantry that's there, you see the warehouse that's there, you see the... the thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of food that are there. It came because we were determined we were not going to let our circumstance change our name to Mara. I, I appreciate that. I don't share it for applause. I share it to make the point. You're going to, listen to me. We're going to wrap this up right now. You're going to go through things in life. Be determined that if you're going to go through it and you're going to suffer, that you're going to take all the gold out of every situation you possibly can. And you're going to, you're going to say, devil, you, you, may, you may, may look like you're winning right now, but when I come out on the other side of this thing, I'm going to be empowered to the point where I'm going to trance all over you. Are you listening? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we recognize that Jesus is our Boaz. <laughs> Jesus is our Redeemer. Jesus is the one that purchased us. Jesus is the one who rescued us. And he's the one that's closer than a brother. He paid for us. He brought us out of the bondage of slavery. He redeemed us with his life and his blood. And he brought us out of our brokenness and brought us into a place of wholeness and in relationship with you, Father. Lord, you brought us out of a land of famine 
of scarcity, of love, scarcity of stability. You took us and purchased us off the auction block. And we're so grateful for that, Father. Now we're determined that no matter what we go through, we're going to allow you and give you the permission to use it. To use the brokenness. To use the times of humiliation. To use the times of disappointment. To use the times of betrayal. And to bring us up on the other side, Lord, with a completely different sense of your presence and sense of your anointing and power that we in turn, having been broken, can now help others that are broken through the power of the Holy Spirit who resides in each and every one of us. Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you. We trust you. We depend on you for everything in our lives. We are content to place ourselves in your hands. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. If you're here, you need prayer for anything. When we are dismissed in just a moment, I would ask you please to come forward. Those of you that are joining us online, please, you can make a, a request for prayer right there. You can just put it in, even in the chat portion or there's a, there's a button that you can click on if you need prayer. We want to minister to you. Now, if there are those that are either watching or joining us online or, or here in person, Jesus is your Redeemer. Jesus purchased your life. If you have never yet up until this point responded in such a way as to open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to draw your heart to his. If you've never prayed a simple prayer to ask Jesus to be your Lord and to be your Savior, we want to do that. We want you, before you leave this place, if you've never prayed that simple prayer, please give us the honor and give us the privilege of praying that prayer with you. Those of you that are joining online, you can, you can receive prayer for salvation right there. One of our hosts will be there to reach out to you. Just indicate, I want to pray. I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I hope this has been a blessing to you. It's been a blessing for me to teach this message. Uh, I look forward to seeing us being transformed, all of us, as we submit ourselves to God and to his will in our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you.